16th Sunday after Pentecost. A reading from the Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Ephesians. Brethren, I pray you not to faint at my tribulations for you, which are your glory. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all paternity in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by his Spirit with might unto the inward man, that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, that being rooted and founded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know also the charity of Christ, which surpasseth all knowledge, that you may be filled unto the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do all things more abundantly than we desire or understand, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus unto all generations, world without end. Amen. Continuation of the Holy Gospel of the Lord of At that time, when Jesus went into the house of one of the chiefs of the Pharisees on the Sabbath day to eat bread, they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him that had the dropsy. And Jesus, answering, spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? But they held their peace. But he, taking him, healed him and sent him away. And answering them, he said, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit and will not immediately draw him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him these things. And he spoke a parable also to them that were invited, marking how they chose the first seats at the table, saying to them, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place, lest perhaps one more honorable than thou be invited by thee. And he that invited thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place. And then thou begin with shame, take the lowest place. But when thou art invited, go sit down in the lowest place, that when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at table with thee, because every one that exalteth himself shall be humble, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Fathers. St. Paul in the Gospel today, among other and various meanings, speaks to the closeness between heaven and earth. Uh, there is an analogy that obtains, to use the theologically technical expression, an analogy of being between things on earth and things in heaven. Of course, we know from the book of Genesis that man himself was created in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, Paul says, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all paternity in heaven and earth is named. All fatherhood on earth takes its meaning from the fatherhood of God, suggesting that the head of the family by tradition father and the husband of a wife is the very image of God. And Paul also tells us that the relationship between husband and wife is that of Christ to Holy Church. So also 
in the gospel today, we have this favorite image, metaphor of our Lord, and that is uh, the wedding feast, the wedding banquet, which figures in many of our Lord's parables. And you recall that his first miracle, the miracle at the marriage feast of Cana, uh, involved him turning water into wine, which is to say a change of the fallen soul into the soul filled with grace and the wine of the Spirit. So this analogy, this close connection between heaven and earth, heaven as the archetype, earth as the ectype or the reflection, the copy, the vestige of the creative mind of God has been a bulwark over the centuries against materialism kind of empty, Newtonian view of the universe as nothing more than matter in motion, which it is decidedly not, but which modern ages have been preaching for the last 500 years, beginning with the first awful revolution that destroyed unity of the church in Europe, namely the so-called Reformation, or really religious revolution in Europe in the 1500s, followed by the scientific revolution, followed by the revolutions of the 18th century, the so-called Enlightenment, and culminating in the Industrial Revolution, which has preached the exploitation of matter for matter's sake for the last 200 years. But we have to see, as Catholic Christians, in nature, the handiwork of God. All of nature glorifies its creator. And we think of this marriage feast, in which we have also the lesson of the marriage of Christ with the soul. What we seek is union with God through the natural apparatus that He has given us of mind and heart, emotions and feelings. He speaks to us, He is in us through grace, and through that grace dwells with us, just as He walked with Adam in the garden at the beginning of time. So grace restores nature, but it builds on it and perfects it. It doesn't remove it. The Puritans, the Protestants, separated these two realms in such a way that nature became the handiwork of the devil. Christ is about marriage. Christ is about loving the soul. Christ is about dwelling in the soul, making fellowship with the soul. If we would but accept the invitation of grace through humility, so that Christ may say to us, friend, go up higher. In the name of the Father, the Son, 